Hi, I'm Melanie from Nova Scotia, Canada, and this is Adventures in Grocery Land. Thank you for joining me on week two meals of my new $23 grocery budget challenge. This is how it works. So I started pretty much from scratch, had available to me some preserves that I made myself, and salt, pepper, parsley, um, a random multi-spice, and honey that I received as a gift. Other than that, uh, I started week one really tight, $23 worth of groceries. I ate repetitively so that I could carry forward as many items as I could so that I would have more flexibility with my budget on week two. Uh, this week, I was able to get some staples. So flour, uh, potatoes, carrots, things that I always think that um, make life much easier when you're cooking. Uh, I got a wonderful bounty. I was able to participate in a food rescue and I got onions. And that is wonderful because I love onions and I cook with them a lot. Um, I did amazing with my groceries for week two and I had some really interesting and delicious meals. Stay tuned to the end of the video because I do show everything that I've accumulated that I have left over. And it's quite impressive just after week two. Thanks so much for tuning in and let me know what you think of the meals. Breakfast today, homemade toast with strawberry jam, homemade strawberry jam. For lunch today, I'm going to make a smoothie. Uh, we'll use a couple of the strawberries. This is one of my oranges in the worst shape and that's going to be fine because I'm going to blend it up. We're going to have yogurt, a little bit of milk and a little bit of water. This orange was mostly not usable. I was able to get a couple little segments out of it. I'm going to grab the other one that's in bad shape and hopefully between the two of them um, I will be able to get enough for the smoothie. <laughs> There was another little disaster like the other day uh, i actually had to get everything out of there clean everything up but i actually took the frozen strawberries and just thawed them a little bit in the microwave and then this worked much much better strawberry orange smoothie for lunch for supper tonight i am going to make tuna casserole I was initially thinking that I was going to use the cream of mushroom soup, but I am going to try to use the rice slurry as a thickener with butter, milk, and flavoring to make a sauce instead. I'm only going to use half the can. I don't need um, pasta casserole or tuna casserole for every day this week. So I'm just going to make half the can, um, some of the pasta, and we'll see how the sauce turns out. This, I've never done this before, so it could be not good, but I have a hope that it will turn out okay. I almost forgot. I'm actually going to use some of the broccoli out of this bag in the tuna casserole because tuna broccoli casserole is just good. The first thing I'm going to do is slowly bring some butter and milk um, to, not to a boil, but to warm it up and melt the butter. I picked through the broccoli cauliflower and got some broccoli out for the casserole. I've got the butter melted. The milk is warming. I'm going to add the spices in first. So I have parsley, broccoli powder, and the onion soup mix. I'm going to add that in first before I add the slurry to start to thicken it. This is smelling really good. I've got the onion soup in there, the broccoli powder, and I'm gonna, I think I'm going to add in, I used maybe a half a teaspoonful of that, but since I've got broccoli as the veggie that's going in, I think I'll add another half a teaspoon of that in to really make it um, a potent flavor. So I've got the macaroni in, broccoli. I might put a couple extra pieces of broccoli in. The cup looked full, but this doesn't look that like that many. I've got the slurry added in. Once it, it's cold because it was in the fridge, but once it warms up, I'm going to start whisking it in to thicken the sauce. The sauce is thickening. It's looking good. 
I've tasted it. It tastes good. Uh, the onion soup mix really added a powerful onion flavor to it. And the broccoli powder really added a, a strong broccoli flavor to it. So I think this is going to be quite good. I've got the macaroni and broccoli drained. I've already got half the can of tuna and half the liquid that was in the can of tuna. I did not drain it uh, in a container to save in the fridge. There is the other half. My sauce is pretty thick, as you can see here. I'm going to pour this in and stir it up. Tuna broccoli casserole topped with black pepper and salt. My honest feedback is this is really good. I was uncertain of how this would turn out. It's really got a lot of flavor. I think that makes the difference. Uh, I do miss, normally I put cheese in a, a tuna casserole. So I do miss that. But besides for that, this is very good. Like, really good. All right, this is the moment of truth. This and another one like it came in my flash food box in week one. Is it a grapefruit or is it an orange? Please be a grapefruit. I'm feeling it's a grapefruit. Yay! It's a grapefruit. Okay, wonderful. I am going, I have sugar now, so I'm going to eat half of this grapefruit for my breakfast today. I'm going to seal the other one up and I'll have half tomorrow. I am pretty excited about this. You can see that I've got it topped with some sugar and I've already loosened all around the outside and in um, each little wedge. Yay. Yay, grapefruit. Ruby red. Even though I ended up paying more for this chicken than what I was hoping this week, I was hoping I'd be able to get a whole chicken marked down to between six and seven dollars. Uh, this was ended up being eight dollars and 25 cents i feel like this was a total score i'm really excited i'm gonna get it in the slow cooker now i'm going to be able to get many many meals this is definitely going to have meat go in the freezer um, remember because it's just me eating so i'm going to have a uh, roast chicken dinner for supper tonight um, i'm going to make some chicken soup with this uh, just all kinds of great stuff. I'm excited. Let's get it in the slow cooker. I know the label's wet now, but you can still see there. This was a 1.5 kg chicken. So that is just, this is about a four pound chicken. I'll do the math. Alexa tells me that it is three pounds, five ounces. I used parsley, a little teeny sprinkling of my summer savory. I don't have a lot of that. So I, I'm going to use that more in the actual recipes and I use some of this stuff and I added a half of a small a red onion and we are going to uh, set this to cook on low all day. Um, this is going to be delicious for supper. For lunch today I am going to use half of my banana. We are going to have a banana strawberry smoothie. I'm going to add some strawberry jam, some homemade strawberry jam into it just to give it a little bit more extra strawberry kick. And one thing about my jam, I make low sugar jam but there is some sugar in it so it will give the smoothie a little bit of sweetness as well. Since I've been having some minor issues with my little blender. I am going to thaw these somewhat first before I attempt to make the smoothie. Banana strawberry smoothie. Yes, there was another disaster again, and I only ended up using one third of the banana. It was a little bit bigger once I partially peeled it than what I had initially thought, so that will give me banana for another two smoothies this week. I've got one of the squash cut in half. I put a little bit of margarine on the inside. I am going to bake this in the oven. And I'm not sure, I'm, I'm starting this a little bit later probably than what I should. I'm hoping that it's gonna be ready for supper tonight. I might try to change the oven from bake to air fry. I don't know if that would make a difference. Or maybe convection might make a difference. This looks amazing and it smells great. 
potatoes and carrots to go with supper. The squash is looking good. I keep basting uh, the top part so that it doesn't totally dry out. I have added some flour and water. I still haven't opened up my new bag of flour. I'm just using uh, some of the little remnants of what was left from week one to make some gravy. Thankfully, the squash was done in time. I've got everything scooped out here. A very big thank, thank you to the Annapolis Valley Frugal Moms uh, Tremont, Tremont location which is where I got the squash and the onions, uh, their food rescue location. Chicken dinner with mashed potatoes, carrots, squash, and gravy. I have leftover chicken. I've moved this much broth into, let's see that, the container. I would like to make some gravy uh, later this week for a different meal. And I have broth left over that I am going to save for a soup I'm going to make. But I'm not going to have the soup to eat today. That is going to be for some lunches for later this week. Ruby red grapefruit for breakfast today. My little smoothie blender has bit the dust. So I am using my regular blender. I don't use this very often, actually. It is so large. I preferred just the smaller one for something personal like a, a little burp blend, a little smoothie. Uh, we're going to have yogurt. I'm going to have one more third of the banana that I got in there, strawberries, and some more strawberry jam. Strawberry banana smoothie for lunch today. I just got gas and now I have one more fast fuel coupon to add into my budget $1.83 Woo! no free ones today sadly chicken dinner for supper tonight this is just the leftovers from last night I am gonna add gravy which again is just leftovers from last night it smells really good I am hungry the beginnings of a chicken soup. I've got chicken left over here. I'm going to add in all of the potatoes and the leftover squash. I've had chicken dinner uh, for su supper twice, so I, I don't want to have that again. So this can just all go in the soup. Also celery, onion, and a carrot, and I have lots of broth. So I have, I started with four cups of broth. I undiluted broth that I got out of uh, the slow cooker from when I actually cooked the chicken. I added in about a cup and a half of water. I've added the leftover mashed potatoes and squash. I added one carrot and I've added about a third of the celery that I had. You can see here that I have my pieces cut quite small for both the celery and the carrots and that's purposeful uh, because this is going to stretch a while I want to make sure that there's you know don't get to the end and there's just broth that I've got enough little pieces that I'm going to get some carrots and some celery in each kind of mouthful of soup uh, I do have to now cut the onion so here is the onion I just want to show so these onions were frozen this is pretty solid. It's not soft. It's not mushy at all. I was thinking I was going to have to process all of them, but this is great. I'm going to be able to use some of these, I think, for some fresh eating. So I'm not going to process all three of those packages that I got, uh, but I'll show you what these look like once I have this whole onion ready for the soup. The onions are in really, really good shape. Like I put these in a salad or even as raw and like a hot dog or hamburger. Uh, I'm, I'm shocked at how good of a shape they're in. In preparing the chicken that I want for the soup that I'm making today, I, I prepared the entire chicken. So let's talk about what I'm going to use it for. 
This is going to go into the soup that I'm making today. And this is a substantial quantity of meat for me for a soup. I don't need uh, tons and tons of protein in a soup. Uh, this is very, very hearty, I think. This is one of the chicken legs, a, like a quite a bit of meat in here. I've frozen it separately. I am going to use that um, at some point in the future if I want to have rice for or chicken to go with a stir fry or something where I don't need tons of meat. This is chicken breast. I've got, you can see there's a division there in the package so that I'll be able to easily remove half, one half or the other once it freezes uh, for future recipes. This pack is all the skin, all the bones, all of the congealed, I guess the, the fat or the juices from when I put this in the fridge. Everything that dripped off of the chicken and congealed at the bottom, I've scraped that into here as well. And one of the chicken legs. So there's a substantial amount of meat and drippings in here to make a real and bones to make a really good broth for an upcoming chicken soup and tons of meat uh, on the chicken drumstick and also just like throughout on the bones. I wasn't real careful. And then I've got this part uh, as well set aside. I'm going to just put this in a, a container in the fridge and I am either going to have this in a meal uh, tonight or tomorrow night. Now that I've got everything in for the soup, I'm just going to let this simmer all morning. Hopefully it'll be ready for me for lunch, or not hopefully, I'm certain it will be ready for me for lunch, and now it's time for breakfast. Breakfast this morning is a grapefruit, half a grapefruit again, and I've got it angled this way because I just want to show that this spot, that little spot, that was the softest spot on the entire grapefruit. So I'm... Um, this fruit was in really good shape. I lost one of the oranges and I still was able to sa salvage a couple segments of it. But really, I guess the value that I got, I really questioned this in week one because I paid $4 for that flash food box. I've really been getting a good value from it. Chicken soup for lunch. It smells amazing. Leftover tuna casserole for supper tonight. The last of the grapefruit this morning for breakfast. This was really nice. I don't normally eat breakfasts, but I really enjoyed having these little grapefruits. Chicken soup for lunch today. Tonight I'm making what I like to call a concoction. This is my leftover rice casserole. And if you will remember, this has in it ground beef, um, green peppers, onions, tomatoes, and mushrooms. So I am going to mix the rice casserole with egg, put it in this baking dish, kind of like it was a quiche, but I don't have any cheese so we'll just pretend that I do and I don't have any spinach with if I was going to make a quiche I'd probably like to put that in there too so we're just going to use eggs this I'm going to slice the tomatoes and top the casserole with that we are going to bake it see how that turns out I added more onion because now I have lots of red onion. Uh, I stirred this up. It's the two eggs mixed with everything else. I am going to uh, chop those tomatoes up and get that on top, and we're going to get it in the oven to bake. I am going to add the lid on top of it, and once it, um, just before it's ready to eat, I'll take that off, and then the tomatoes can crisp up a bit. This looks really, really awesome. This looks really, really good. Turned out way better than what I was expecting. I now I'm going to try it and see what it tastes like. This was phenomenally delicious. Way better than what I could have hoped for. I, I made it as a concoction. Of course, I always have hope that things are going to turn out well, but I, I was really unsure. It was delicious. Um... I really liked it a lot. I, I thought that I would really miss that it didn't have cheese or other things in it, and, and I didn't. 
I didn't feel like, oh, I wish I had salsa on it or, oh, I wish I had ketchup. None of that. It was really great just on its own by itself. I loved this. It, it's, even over the chicken dinner, this was probably my favorite meal this week. This is where not labeling things makes things a little uncertain. I'm having yogurt for breakfast this morning. I'm adding some jam to it. I think this is cherry jam. Uh, it's a bottle that I had in the fridge. I'm not sure I didn't label it. I think that's what it is. So we're going to try it. Yep, it's cherry. Chicken soup for lunch today. There was enough of this little quiche that I made to last for two suppers. I have been looking forward to this all day. It was that good last night. This is a labor of love, but it is going to make me feel like I have more options and more variety. It's literally the same food, but I am going to separate into peas, carrots, corn, and beans, and that will make it feel like I have more variety of vegetables available to me. This is what I ended up with. Beans, carrots, peas. I put the lima beans in with the corn, and I saved just a small amount of the mixed veggies left, um, you know, for soups or whatever. But yes, this was labor intensive, but I wanted to do it. There is a recipe up and coming that I want to have just peas with, and there is a recipe up and coming that I'm going to use the corn and the lima beans in. So this worked out really well for me. Um, one bag of mixed vegetables can certainly be quite versatile. Smoothie for breakfast this morning. I have a little bit of yogurt in here, some milk, uh, some of the cherry jam, and some of the strawberries. As I was pouring this, a bunch of big clumps fell in. Let's see if I can, yeah. Like, it's not, ugh. I miss my little one. I just feel like I lose so much around the edges of the big blender. I poured it back in. They're still a little chunky, not as bad as it was before. I forgot to say that I put that last third of my banana in the smoothie. Definitely need to get used up. Once you open a banana, they don't really last that long. I just threw the ingredients in for a half loaf. I've got a mess everywhere on the counter. I forgot I was making a half loaf and I put too much flour in. I was only supposed to use a, a half of this quarter of a cup, so I had to scoop some out. So hopefully that turns out okay. I have hope. I always have hope. I do get requests for the recipe that I use for bread. This is my most common go-to. This is the one I use the most. Uh, I'm going to take a picture here, and that'll probably stay on the screen for about five seconds. These are all the settings on the bread maker. I tend to use the same settings all the time. And the last time I made a half loaf, so last week, I used setting number five, 1.5 basic pound basic light. Today I decided to use the 1.5 pound super rapid, which I've never used before. And it came up that the bread was only gonna take an hour to make. And I could tell right away as the dough was starting to mix, so you can see here, timer, knead, rise, bake, complete. Um, as it was starting to mix, it was already warming up. This is the state that we're in now. It says there's 13 minutes left, and the total time was only an hour. So I'm very curious as to how this bread is going to turn out. We'll see. So the bread is actually cooked, rapid. I can see why someone might want to use that setting, but... It didn't rise as much as what a normal loaf would be for me. So I think that, yeah, this was an interesting experiment. But moving forward, I should just use the regular setting and I'll get a more substantial loaf. Chicken soup for lunch today and I'm really excited to have homemade bread with it today. Yay! For supper tonight, I am going to make hot chicken sandwiches on my homemade bread with peas and home fries. I am making home fries in the air fryer. So normally I toss my fries in a little bit of oil. I don't have any. So my workaround is this is a bit of the margarine I have. I am going to melt this in the microwave and I'm going to toss it with that.
This looks absolutely amazing. Smells delicious. I am really excited. I've been really excited about my meals the last couple weeks. I mean, this is a tight budget, but I still feel like I've been eating really well and food that I'm actually really enjoying. Week two is finished and I want you guys to really take a good look at this. This is what I have left after two weeks and I spent $23 cash a week. That is a total of $46. I ate for the two weeks and I have all of this left, left over. Let's get it started. I'm going to break her down here. We've got some milk left. There's not tons left in there, but there is some. I've got margarine now. Uh, there's probably maybe a third of the yogurt left. That is leftover chicken soup. So some meals, lunches for next week. That's some leftover chicken. Uh, there is celery. I still have oranges and lemons. I have one tomato left. I've got some carrots two little packages that I pre-did up of um, instant oatmeal. I have a third, a quarter of a green pepper and a little bit of the onion. I have a garlic clove. Now this is what I got for free from the food rescue. So I have onions and one of the squash left over. Speaking of the squash, this in here is the skin of half of the squash I ate the other one. And yes, I like I like them when you bake them in the oven. Um, they are actually really, really good. I just brushed a little bit of uh, margarine on it and it was really delicious. I have used, I think, four eggs total. Two for an omelet week one, two for the quiche. So yeah, there should be eight eggs left in there. My loaf of bread, my little items from the bulk barn i have all the chili powder left i haven't used any i have enough yeast left to do a half a loaf or a half of a pizza sadly what i thought were green lentils and i even went back and looked at my receipt and it says green lentils these are split peas the little bit of oatmeal left and there's some sugar potatoes in the back there i've got flour cream of mushroom soup tomato soup mixed beans, canned tomatoes, macaroni left, about half the pack, past, uh, spaghetti left, half the pack. I didn't use any new rice this week, so that's still left in there. I divided up my veggies here, so I've got a little bit of green beans, probably enough for one meal, some corn, some carrots, some peas in the back here, a little bit of mixed veggies here. Uh, this is my leftover broccoli and cauliflower mix. So you'll notice that something that I like to do to make things a little more versatile for myself when I'm on a really tight budget, I like to buy frozen mixes that have blends. Uh, so this week I pulled out just some broccoli out of this and used it in my tuna casserole. That was very helpful to me. Plus, I also have access to cauliflower. This is my leftover frozen strawberries. This is the leftover, the third of the mango that I had from week one. This is a frozen puck of pasta sauce. It's like meat and mushrooms. Like it's prepared pasta sauce in here, which brings me to, I don't have it out here, but in the freezer, in the same silicone form that I made this puck, I put all of the leftover pasta sauce. So I used half a can of pasta sauce for my spaghetti. And I don't want it to go bad, but I wasn't eating spaghetti this week. So I just put them in the, the little forms. I should do that when I'm done with this video. Take them out, pop them out of there and put them in um, a little baggie. And so I'll have pasta sauce for when I whenever I want to use it. This is a little teeny bit of broth. Uh, in here is frozen um, broth. This is the leftover hamburger. I cut it in half. Frozen here. This is half the can of tuna. Uh, what have I got back here? Can of mushrooms. And now this is what's really awesome. So for many meals to come, uh, this is a chicken drumstick. So this is perfect for some kind of stir fry if I want it. Uh, that is all chicken breast meat and I've got it cut in half here so two separate meals and then this pack here this is the 
skin, the like the broth, the there's all kinds of meat and there's one other chicken leg in there. So this is what I've got left over. I'm not saying that it's super easy. You have to work at it. You have to look for the deals. I feel that I'm fairly lucky and I say that all the time, but when you really think about it, it's not luck when you're looking. I actively look for deals. If I go to town for any reason, I try to make the most of the trip and I'll pop into a couple grocery stores and do a very, very quick perimeter sweep. I look for markdowns in the fresh um, produce section. I look for markdowns in the meat section. And then I look for, usually there's a cart somewhere in a store, there's a cart and it's got I guess, non-perishable items like canned soup or pasta or sauces, bottled sauces, stuff like that. And I actively look for those. On social media, I follow different grocery stores that are in my area so that if they're having an in-store special and they post it, I see it. I actively look in the flyers. I make a list. I shop from a list. I make meal plans from the food that I already have. So just as a heads up, you can see that I have the ingredients here and here and here for a chili. I was going to make it this week and I was so discouraged when I realized that I had these split peas because I was going to make it, uh, bulk it up a little more so that I could use less ground beef with lentils. So I... I just kind of was discouraged about that and thought I'll wait and see if I can get lentils on next week and kind of the same plan. So I do plan on making chili up and coming. Um, look at all these onions. I'm going to try to make something with that, perhaps an onion soup. I've never made onion soup, French onion soup before in my life. But when you get a bounty of something, you try to figure it out. You make your own luck. Anyways, I think that we did fantastic in week one and week two. I've mostly completed the shop for week three. Uh, so stay tuned for that video coming out um, early next week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would really appreciate it if you would do so. It would help me. Have a great weekend, everybody.